What's up, guys? Lewin here at GarageBand and beyond. I hope you're having a great day out there. Hey, do me a favor. If you like the videos that I make, click on that subscribe button down there and the little bell next to it. The subscribing is awesome because, uh, you know, that helps me just because I need more subscribers. I'm trying to get that play button from YouTube. And if you hit the bell, you get the notification. So that's cool. And it's just a little click. Clickety click, super simple thing to do. Anyway, today we are going to talk about how to customize the effects in the master output channel inside of GarageBand. It's true, we only get two effects in that master output channel. One is the platinum reverb and the other one is the analog delay arguably the best of those kinds of effects inside of GarageBand. So I'm okay with those being the defaults that you cannot change as far as I have ever figured out. But when you do go to that master channel output effects, you might notice that you are limited by the amount of customization that you can do to that effect, right? So in the case of the reverb, I'm talking about the platinum reverb, which actually has six different parameters that you can change. But when you look at it in this master window, you only get three, right? Same goes for the delay. Uh, let's look at the master echo. So this is the analog delay. There are only four options to change here but in the actual plugin, there are nine. The reason you wanna be able to do this is when you have a bunch of vocal tracks or guitar tracks or whatever, when you have a bunch of tracks that you wanna have the same reverb on, maybe with slightly different volumes, but essentially the same reverb, okay? So that's what we're gonna program into uh, an individual channel first, and then we will be able to access it from the master channel. All right, I'm going to do this really quick down and dirty, just try to show you how to do it. Okay, these might not be the ideal settings for this vocal track. But anyway, let's look at it. So pre delay, reverb time, high cut, spread, dry and wet. I mean, these are all options we don't have when we look in that master channel, but now they are here. Okay, so we're going to just set this relatively random. Let's make the pre-delay a little bit shorter than that. And we'll make the reverb time a little bit shorter and bring the high cut down. I always bring the high cut down. That's a nice Beatles trick. Bring the high cut down. Um, open up the spread a little bit and dry wet looks pretty good. Maybe we'll turn up just a touch. All right, let's listen to that. Okay, great. So there, I have a perfectly nice reverb on this channel. Now, what I need to do is save this, okay? So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna hit save as, and we're just gonna call this a uh, test verb for now. Okay, right now, this has been set. Now say you wanna put this on every single vocal track. This is what you're gonna do. You're gonna come down to the master channel. You're gonna come up to here. You're gonna turn it into reverb. You're gonna come down to this menu. You're gonna to go to more, and then we're looking for load, okay? Now, when it opens, boom, there's my test verb, okay? So this now is exactly how I set it up in that previous channel, where I need to go back and actually make sure that it's off. Now, all I need to do to access that reverb is actually turn it up here, right? Super, super easy. Um, you know, since it is a, a preset, I can't turn it on and off. It's already determined that I, I obviously want to use it, right? I'm, I've loaded a preset. So I can't shut it off, um, which is fine. This fader over here goes away as well. However, it's there. Right? Okay, so now you can hear the reverb on that channel. So let's go in and just turn it up on all of these, just so we can sort of explain or show you guys what's going on. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Now it's on all of them. Maybe not hear the whole song. Okay, so there, I hope that already helped you. All right, now the same exact thing goes for the delay, all right? All right, so let's open the tape delay and take a look at its parameters. Ooh. Quarter note's not bad, actually. Let's make it a little more obvious for the sake of example, okay? Um, so, okay, there. Cool. All right, now I have it here. I'm gonna actually open that back up and I'm gonna save that as, uh, let's say Lewin delay one. Okay. So as we can see, it's going into that tape delay folder and we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to turn it off in here 
and we're going to go down to the master channel and we're going to open up the delay the echo and then we're going to come down here more load and boom there is my delay okay same exact thing goes uh for this now i'm going to come back up here and i'm going to just turn it up All right now it's here and you can see it's off in the plugin window but when i push play right it's there exactly how I had it set so now I can go down and just turn them all up again being really quick about this and not very precise obviously uh, let's listen to them with all the delays that's it now I can use this channel properly there are so many good reasons to do this. Number one reason is it's so much easier to do it this way than have to, even if you like save the preset and then want to go through channel by channel and open them, that's a huge pain in the butt. You can open it once and then just change the volume in the default volume fader that they've given you at the bottom of the window. Um, so that's one reason. It's also a lot less taxing on your system. So if you find that your GarageBand application is slowing down a lot when you start you know adding effects to every single channel this is one of the reasons you're taxing your system too much and there is a way around it so just open the plugin once and then just feed all of these signals through it this is actually truly subgrouping effects you know through GarageBand a lot of people complain that we don't have uh, like all the subgrouping options that we could possibly have and yeah that's not awesome but we do have some of them and I don't think a lot of you knew about this so I just wanted to make this video for you which I hope helped a lot because it is a super powerful trick to know how to do it really does uh, speed up workflow and just you know the just the overall performance of GarageBand if you use this method to get your reverbs on it you're going to save yourself time and your computer's not going to bog down so much. So that's great. Okay, you guys. Well, I hope that answers some of your questions about how to do this stuff. Um, it's pretty simple. Those are great reverbs. That's a great reverb. That's a great delay. So work with those and uh, enjoy yourself. All right, you guys. So many thank yous to all the people on my Patreon page. You guys are the best. If you're curious about the rewards and the content that comes out only on my Patreon page, please check out the link below, patreon.com forward slash garage band and beyond. Uh, yeah, because that is one of my favorite things right now. The Patreon thing, that is what is keeping this channel afloat and surviving. So thank you to all the patrons because I appreciate it. All right, you guys have an awesome day. Talk to you later. Peace.